Today we're going to talk about how to install a Big Tree Tech TFT35. Now this board does have some issues, but uh, it is pretty much functional. So I'm going to show you the tutorial and I know in the future they're going to update the firmware. So we're going to learn to install it on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3. And as you can see over here, there's five pins for our TF display that I'll show you how to connect to this in just a second. Here's the back side of the Big Tree Tech TFT35 version 1.2. As you can see over here, this is where our TFT display port is, and it's a notch connecting. We also have uh, a couple other ports over here that they haven't described in their documentation yet. For uh, it looks like three volts, a ground, and that might be a signal pin, but we'll figure that out later. It probably is for a filament runout, but we'll have to confirm that when they actually come up with their documentation. It also looks like we have a five volt power jack over here that we can use. But seeing how we're going to be running 5 volts off of this, we're going to skip that for the moment. And unfortunately, I don't know what these pins yet are. But uh, like I said, when they have the documentation, we'll know. But uh, I do know what this is. It's an ARM processor. It's 32-bit. And then we also have an SD card that we can use for updating our TFT display. And allegedly, there are some issues with running your print off the TFT display at the moment. But I'm sure they're going to work that out in future releases of the firmware. So to start with, I'm going to show you the connector that we're going to use right here. That connects over to the notched connection right here. And then I'll show you the other end in just a moment on the SKR version 1.3. Okay, as you can see, we have our TFT over here that we need to connect to. So I'm going to take the connector, and notice how we have on our DuPont connector the sides for the uh, connections to the wiring here. This is actually going to face inward to the board, so we're going to take this portion and we're going to leave it off for a second and we're going to line up the remaining pins then we're going to connect the last pin over here and then I'm going to move this off to the side for a moment in order to set it up so that we can actually load firmware to enable this I'm going to connect the USB to show you what the current state of the LCD is for the TFT display. So I'm going to connect the big side here and the small side to the computer. Now keep in mind that we may need to be in the right position for our USB to be enabled so it has to be on these two pins not this one over here. So remember to move your jumper. And now I'm going to connect it to the computer so we can power it. And as you can see, the display currently has an issue where it says no printer attached. We're going to take care of that in the firmware in just a second. Okay, to start with, as you can see, we currently have firmware.cur. This is our cursor file. It currently is 82 kilobytes and obviously it was modified last a couple of hours ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Atom with Platform I.O. loaded and we're going to set it up. But before I set it up, I want to explain something. First, I purchased the TFT35 with my own money. I'm not being sponsored or paid to do this video. But I will be putting Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So the first thing that I need to explain is that you can download Marlin-Bugfix-2.0.x 
from the Marlin website. It'll come as a zip file, so you're going to have to unzip it. Next, after it's unzipped, you're going to have to open up File and navigate to the folder for Marlin and then open the complete folder. That'll give you the display that you see right here for modifying your firmware. So I'm going to close this platform IO home for just a second here and then what I'm going to do is show you how to navigate around. So we're going to open up the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, and then we're going to open up boards.h. Inside boards.h we're going to do a search on SKR and we're going to find the board that we're working with which is board underscore SKR underscore V1 underscore 3 and we're going to copy that. Next we're going to close these folders back down and we're going to go to the configuration.h. Inside configuration.h we're going to do a search on motherboard and we're going to highlight board underscore ramps underscore one four underscore EFB and we're going to paste what we just copied then we're going to scroll up and because this TFT 35 is unable to function at a quarter million bits per second we're going to change it to 115 200 and we're going to paste that over the quarter million right here next we're going to scroll up and we're going to make sure that our serial port is set to zero in this case now if you're having trouble loading your firmware I made a video that you can check out that'll help you with that but for now this is what the default setting will be for the board when we have the USB connected and enabled so I'm going to connect off camera a couple of steppers so I'm going to show you this very quickly so I'm going to do a search on A4988 and down here we have a bunch of steppers that we need to enable in order to move them for our LCD to test it so I'm going to remove the comment for the X the Y the Z and for good practice E0 now I'm gonna be doing an A4988 for the X and the Y but for Z I'm gonna do the DRV8825 to show you the contrast so I'm gonna copy this and paste it for here and the next thing that we need to do is actually set up the stepping for this because this is 1 16th of a step whereas the DRV8825 is 1 32nd of a step. So I'm going to search on max underscore and what we're looking for is default axis steps per unit. And as you can see X is 80, Y is 80, and then we have Z which is 4000. So to get this to the right position because it's double the resolution, we have to change the 4000 to an 8000. And that's all we have to do for this setup. And uh, keep in mind if you don't know how to install these stepper drivers for the A4988 and DRV8825, I've done a video which is in my playlist that explains it in detail. I highly recommend watching that before installing it only because you may accidentally cook your stepper or your board if you're not sure how to correctly connect it to your SKR version 1.3. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go to platform IO and because this has a default of a chipset of mega AT mega 2560 we need to change the environment default to the correct chipset so we're going to scroll down and find our chipset which is the LPC 1768 we're going to copy that and this is for an ARM Cortex M3 so we're going to scroll back up 
And for our default environment, we're going to paste it over the Mega AT Mega 2560. And to compile and upload, we're going to press the Platform IO Upload, then press Save and allow this to compile, then upload to the SKR version 1.3 with the TF drive already inserted and enabled for USB. So here we go. Okay, now that uh, we have completed the firmware compilation, you can see that there's a new file called firmware.bin. And note the time, it's 1029. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to show you what I normally do by disconnecting the USB from the computer and reconnecting it to show the update. You can check that on your own. I'm actually going to show you on the actual LCD screen for the TFT35 what occurs. But if you want to confirm that you actually had a good compile, you can go over to Atom with Platform I.O. loaded and go to Platform I.O. Toggle Build Panel. And as you can see, it says that it succeeded. So let's check to see what the chipset says. As we can see, the LPC 1768 was successful. Okay, off camera, I uh, have not yet connected the stepper drivers. I'm going to cut away for a moment to show you that. So I'll be putting these in in just a moment, but I want to show you the update. So I'm going to remove the USB from the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3. So we're going to lose the power. Now I'm going to reconnect it and when it said printer is offline we'll see what happens so it still says no printer attached and now it's gone away so in a second I'll connect the stepper drivers and power this up for you and show you that we can actually move the steppers okay as you can see I've attached all of the stepper drivers that we're going to use for this case I'm only going to be doing the Y axis so you can see it, but uh, I have to remind you to move your USB enable to your power enable for this. And as you can see, the wiring is connected for the power supply, and I'm going to plug it in. So it's going to take a second to power up. There it goes. We're going to go to move and we're going to set this from one millimeter to 10. Now we're going to move the Y axis. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe and thank you for your time.